Hey everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to throw a really cute Valentine's Day picnic date for your stuffed animals. I've been seeing these Valentine's Day picnic ideas all over TikTok, and even though I won't end up throwing one of these for myself, putting all this together for this video was super fun and got me really excited for Valentine's Day. Now let's get started! The first thing I'm going to make is definitely the most work, and that is the picnic basket. I don't think you need this to throw a picnic, but someone did request picnic supplies, so I figured I'd tie that in here. And I'm going to be making mine out of brown construction paper, or you could use cardstock, and I'm using some thin cardboard for the base. I'm going to be making this pretty much the same way I made my Easter basket from a previous video. I'm first going to sketch out the base of the basket, so this time I want it to be an oval, so I'm just eyeballing a long, roundish shape like this. And I just wanted to make it pretty proportional to the stuffed animals going on the picnic. Next, I'm cutting a long rectangle of paper that should be long enough to go around the entire base. And I think I made it about three inches wide. Then I'm gonna fold this in half lengthwise. And then I'm gonna start making evenly spaced cuts on that fold, making sure to not cut all the way through. I probably left about a quarter inch on that top edge. Once I've gotten to the end, I can unfold this and kind of fold it backwards to try to make that fold a little flatter. And here I've already cut some strips of brown paper, and you want this to be a little bit thinner than the width of the cuts you already made. So this will give it more of a rectangular weave, and I honestly could have made mine a little bit thinner. Okay, starting on one side, I'm going to take the strip and go over that first part, and then under the next cut. And then over the next one, and under the next one. I know that's not very descriptive, but hopefully it's self-explanatory just watching the video. And then you just can repeat that until you get to the other side. This does take kind of a long time, and I was worried it wouldn't even pay off because, you know, it's brown on brown, it's not super noticeable. But I think in the end, it definitely is worth it. It's really subtle, but you can tell it has more of a basket look. Once I got to the end, I tried to push this strip all the way to the top as close as I could, but it won't be completely straight if your cuts are a little uneven, but that's fine. Mine were not even at all. But now at the ends, I'm just gluing them down so this doesn't slide around or anything. Now for the next strip, I'm going to make sure to start under that first side, and then over the next one, under the next one, over the next one. That way it's opposite that first strip and you'll get that kind of checkerboard pattern. Also, if you happen to have two different colors of brown paper, I would use two different colors, but I only had one. So now I'm going to repeat that until I can't add any more strips. Okay, here is how it looks once it's done, and since my strips were longer than the first piece, I just need to trim off the ends. Next, I'm going to take either the top or bottom edge, whichever one you want, and fold that up. And the side that fold is on is going to be the inside of the basket. And then I'm going to make little cuts along there, but maybe like an inch apart. They don't have to be super close. Then I'm gluing that down. But I'm going to leave one of the end flaps up. Now on the bottom edge, I'm going to make a bunch of little cuts, and this time you want them pretty close together. And I'm kind of trying to do them staggered with the cuts in the middle of the paper so it doesn't accidentally like cut all the way through. Then I'm going to fold all these up and put glue on the top part of this because I'm going to be gluing this around the base of the basket. So that's going to be kind of sitting inside on top of those flaps. And once the sides meet, I added some glue to one of the sides and glued them together. And then I folded over that open flap over the top of both. After that, the base of the basket is done. And next, I'm going to be making like a little fabric insert piece to dress it up a little and just make it more themed for Valentine's Day. And if you want to do this without sewing, I would cut like little squares of fabric and just kind of glue that in with the corners kind of sticking out folded over the edge of the basket. I've never done something like this before, so I just wanted to try it out and see if it worked. So basically, I just took a long strip of fabric that would be able to fit inside the whole thing. It was probably about four and a half inches wide since you needed extra long to fold over the edge. And then I just traced the base of the basket on fabric and cut it out, leaving a little extra seam allowance. And next, I'm going to hem the top edge of this rectangle piece. So I'm just folding it over once and pinning along this long side. And then I'm going to use a straight stitch to sew this in place. Now to connect this to the oval piece, I'm flipping them good side to good side. And I'm starting kind of at the long side of the oval to make this easier. And I'm just lining up the edges and pinning them together. 
and around the curves this gets a little harder but it'll just look kind of awkward like this but keep going and once the ends are able to meet in the back you can pin them together good side to good side like this i'm surprised i didn't have like a lot extra because i completely eyeballed everything but now since the ends seem to match up perfectly i'm going to sew straight across there first and then i'm going to go around the entire thing okay here's what it looks like when it's done it's pretty simple right only two trips to the sewing machine and now you don't have to turn this inside out you can just plop this in the basket Mine was honestly a little bit too big, but it's just going inside a basket. It doesn't really matter. But actually, better to be too big than too small because at least I was easily able to fold over this edge. I probably left about like half an inch sticking out. And now the last thing I'm going to add to this is the handle. So I'm just taking a long strip of brown construction paper and folding each side kind of into the middle. And this is just so it's a little more sturdy. And now I'm kind of curving it and checking how it looks on the basket. And now you can use glue or tape to connect this. Or if you want it to be able to rotate, you can take one of the ends and poke a hole through it. I used a very thick pin and then fit the wire inside because that's what's going to connect this. And then I'm also poking a hole in the basket where I want to attach it. And then I'm stacking the holes together and putting the wire through there. And this is just some thin craft wire I have, but instead of wire, you could also use those little metal things with prongs. I think they're called brads. It's honestly really impressive that I could even remember the name, but that would work too. And so I basically just cut a very small piece of wire and bent the ends. So I hope you're able to see that. I just kind of bent the ends flat against the paper. So now this should be able to rotate to lower the handle. I am honestly surprised this worked, but I'm really happy about it. Now I'm gonna repeat the same thing for the other side. I forgot to mention it is good to have the fabric piece in when you measure this because you want the handle to be lower than the edge of the fabric. This is already looking super cute, but to add even more cuteness and pink, I decided to add a little bow with poster putty. I just took some ribbon, tied it in a bow, and since I had poster putty, used that to stick it on. Or you could probably use a really tiny piece of tape, but I only want this connected to the wire so it can still move. But yeah, seven minutes in, the picnic basket is finally done, so now I can make some stuff to put inside. For the main course of this picnic, I'm going to be making some little heart-shaped grilled cheese sandwiches, and I'm going to be making fake ones out of some thick craft foam. I didn't show how thick this was, but I just measured and it's about half a centimeter thick. A thinner one would also work though. And I first traced out a heart-shaped pattern and then drew it on my foam. And then I cut it out using scissors. And this can be a little tricky because it might leave little indentations in the foam like what happened to me. So you can use like an X-Acto knife or something. But I think I've used an X-Acto knife before and it was also pretty hard. Okay, so after cutting out a second one for the other side of the sandwich, I'm going to be coloring this with some chalk pastels to look like, you know, actual grilled or toasted bread. But you can skip this step if you're already using, like, tan craft foam. Yes, I know this is a terrible choice of brush to use because it's just, like, so fanned out, but all my other brushes were dirty and I haven't cleaned them. If you don't have chalk pastels, you could also try using makeup if you have it, like bronzer or something, or you could just kind of paint it tan. I went a little bit too light at first, but after looking up some reference photos of grilled cheeses, I went a little bit darker. Then I'm painting the edges tan to be the crust and give it more of a bread look. Then to make the cheese part, you could use another layer of foam, but I'm going to be using hot glue for this to give it more of that gooey cheese look. So I'm just going around the outer edge of one of the sides and kind of trying to let it drip over a little bit. And there's no need to fill in the inside as long as you get all around the outside. And you do want a really thick layer of this because no one wants a bad bread to cheese ratio. Then you might have to do a little glue around the entire thing if it's dried and then place the other side on top. Then there were some gaps where you could see the white part of the foam so I went and filled those in because I do want it sticking out enough because next I'm going to be painting that glue part orange for the cheese. After a few coats of this and making a second one, here are the finished grilled cheeses. They're a little messy and obviously not perfect, but I think you get the idea that they're heart-shaped grilled cheeses, so I'm happy with that. Next, I'm gonna be making a little flower bouquet, which I feel like is essential, so I sent Tubby out to get some flowers for his beloved. I'm just kidding, I set them up randomly, so it's kind of a blind date. 
These flower stems were really short, so I wrapped a pipe cleaner around it to hold them together and also give the stem some length. And I don't know how much it helped because I really struggled wrapping this flower bouquet. So first I took like a little square of brown paper to give it more of that rustic look and tried to fit it around there, but I think it was too small. So later I went in with some tissue paper and that was a good idea, but I just wasn't liking how it was looking. So then after that, I went back to the brown paper and made sure to first use some tape to hold it together. And then I tied a ribbon around the base. I wish I could have given a better description on how to do this, but I was really struggling and just had to do it off camera. Okay, so let's start putting this into the picnic basket. So I'm gonna put the bouquet in the back and then I found this little teddy bear. He's got kind of a weird look, but was the right size and I think matches the picnic theme. And then I could fit a few more things. So I just put in those heart-shaped grilled cheeses. Not the most sanitary, but you know, they're fake. Okay, so I have almost everything I need to start setting up. But one more touch I'm gonna add is making little fake conversation hearts. You know, like those candies that I feel like I've never eaten cause they never looked that good. But I'm making some big fake ones to decorate the blanket. So I just cut out hearts of different colors and started writing little messages on them with red pen. I looked up pictures of the actual ones. So the messages were authentic and also I was running out of ideas. Okay, now I can finally start setting this up. I will be using other stuff I didn't make in this video, but if I do have a video for it, I'll link it. But I'm just gonna do a chill montage for the setup. Now that is going to be it for this video. I really hope you all enjoyed it and have an amazing Valentine's Day. I'll see you next time. Bye! Well, maybe this could be the